Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about allylic bromination. Uh, and so allylic bromination is a special kind of bromination reaction that occurs at the allylic position. And we're going to talk about uh, how this works. But we're going to start by asking a question, what is the most likely site of radical bromination on cyclohexene? Um, and what is the most likely site of radical bromination is exactly the same kind of, of question as as this question, where is the most stable radical form? Which is exactly the same question as which CH bond on the structure is the weakest CH bond? Uh, if you can answer any of these questions, you can answer any of the other questions. Because bromination happens at the place where the most stable radical is formed, which is where the weakest CH bond is. <clears throat> and we can draw all of the things out, but the most stable radical that can form on this structure is uh, at the allyl position. And you might have guessed that uh, because this video is titled Allylic Bromination. And, you know, the allyl radical is resonance stabilized. So uh, it's more likely to form than any other. And so if this reaction were to go and we'd get radical bromination, we would get radical bromination at the allyl position. Um, but, but there's some trouble here, and the trouble is that uh, this reaction does something very different without the radical, without the radical conditions, without the UV irradiation. Cyclohexene plus bromine uh, has a competing addition reaction. We have a competing addition reaction. And I can tell you from personal experience that addition reaction is really fast. And it starts to happen as soon as bromine is added to cyclohexene. It's almost impossible to stop. So in that regard, uh, we are not going to get, uh, even under radical conditions, I do not want that square, even under radical conditions, the addition product might still actually be the major product isolated. But if we really want to get the radical product and not the addition product, we need to do something different. And what we want to do is minimize or eliminate the presence of bromine. I mean, this is this is the, the trick. And we we want to so we want a source of bromine radicals, but not uh, molecular bromine. And the reagent of choice for doing so, and there, there are actually a couple of things out there in the, the organic chemist's toolbox, but the reagent of general reagent of choice looks like this. And you might look at that and say, I've never seen something that looks like that before. And you know, and that's okay. Um, this molecule is called n bromo succinamide. Right. Uh, when you just have a hydrogen here instead of a bromine, that's just succinamide. So with the bromine, it's N, N telling us that the, the bromine is on the nitrogen, bromo succinamide. Okay. Uh, and N bromo succinamide happens to be a source of bromine radicals, so it can undergo. Uh, homolytic cleavage, or it can be activated by an initiator to produce bromine radicals. 
and succinamide radicals. And therefore, you know, we're no longer dealing with things that produce electrophilic bromine. Uh, in an upcoming video, I'm going to cover the mechanism of this reaction. But if we take our uh, take our reaction from up here at the top of this page, and we replace Br2 with n bromo um, which uh, organic chemists are lazy. We look for abbreviations of things. We were going to abbreviate n bromo NBS because big word, uh, lots of things. Complicated structure, hard to fit over an arrow. Uh, now, because this is a source of radical bromine without being a source of Br2, uh, we're going to get the radical product as the major product. And we'll see how this works in the next couple of videos. Thanks for watching.